Buster Murdoch joins Defamation Nation with an explosive new lawsuit. May it please the viewers, I'm Rich Schoenstein for True Crime MTN. Thank you so much for joining us. Like us, subscribe us, do all that stuff. We're going to talk today about a new lawsuit, a civil lawsuit, music to my ears. I love civil litigation, brought by Buster Murdoch. And if you don't remember who that is, that is the youngest son of Alec Murdoch, who was convicted last year for the murders of his wife and his older son, Paul. Now, <clears throat> that conviction is under appeal. And I've commented previously, I think that appeal actually has a chance because of all the crazy conduct of the former law clerk, Becky Hill. But I leave that topic for another day. Alec Murdoch is also convicted of state and federal charges for what everybody calls financial crimes. That means stealing from his law firm, stealing from his helpless clients who were depending on him for help, uh, people who were quadriplegic, people who really needed financial support, really terrible crimes. Those are likely to keep him in jail for the rest of his life, no matter what happens on the appeal. Now, Buster Murdoch. If you know this already, there is, was a young man named Stephen Smith who was found dead on Sandy Hill on Sandy Run Road in Hampton County, South Carolina in 2015. He was 19 years old, he was gay, and initially it was determined to be a hit and run, and he was buried. That case was reopened by South Carolina Law Enforcement Division, what we call SLED, after Alec Murdoch's conviction and it was opened as a homicide investigation. The body was exhumed, a second autopsy was performed. And as far as I know, no suspects have been announced, no arrests have been made. There have been some reports that there's a statewide grand jury, but no one's been indicted or anything like that. However, there was lots of speculation, and I mean speculation, that Buster Murdoch could have been a suspect. And I want to be clear about this. I said speculation. I don't know of any evidence. I don't know of any facts supporting it. I don't know of any witnesses. I don't know of any credible information that Buster Murdoch had anything to do with the death of Stephen Smith. But that didn't stop people from talking about it. And that talking about it led to this new lawsuit, which Buster Murdoch filed on June 14th, 2024, in the Court of Common Pleas in the state of South Carolina, County of Hampton. And here's what Buster Murdoch alleges. He is talking about three specific, uh, really documentaries or series that were broadcast. One in June of 2022 by Warner Brothers Discovery, something called Murdoch Mysteries Deadly Dynasty. It was created and produced by a company called Blackfin. And according to Buster Murdoch's complaint, it falsely suggests and subtly accuses that Buster was the murderer. Then in November of 2022, there was a three-part series called Low Country, the Murdoch Dynasty. That was uh, put on by Warner Brothers Discovery, Inc. and Warner Media Entertainment Pages, Inc., according to the complaint created and produced by a company called Campfire Studios. And according to the complaint, that series included false statements suggesting Buster murdered Smith with a baseball bat and further insinuates that Buster had a romantic relationship with Smith that somehow led to the murder. Finally, there's a February 2023 Netflix series. I know many of you watch this called Murdoch Mysteries or Murdoch Murders, A Southern Scandal. It was created and produced by a company called Cinemart. And in that broadcast, they show a unnamed redheaded young man with a baseball bat. And the complaint says that is a false suggestion. There are false suggestions that the Murdochs were involved in the, in the killing of Smith, and specifically that that's really supposed to be Buster, who famously has a big red head of hair. And that's supposed to be him carrying a baseball bat. And they say, too, this series falsely suggests 
that Buster had a romantic relationship with Smith and killed him, possibly with two others. The complaint names Netflix, it names uh, Cinemart, it also names Michael DeWitt, editor of the Hampton County Guardian, who appears in the documentary. He doesn't come out and say that Buster Murdoch did it, but he confirms that there were rumors about a connection. The complaint says all of these statements were defamatory, caused mental anguish, they seek actual damages, punitive damages, cost of suit. So when I first heard Buster Murdoch was suing for defamation, I sort of rolled my eyes. But when I read the complaint, I, I think it has legs. I mean, defamation, uh, if you accuse someone of a crime, like murder, that is what we call defamation per se. It, it is defamation as a matter of law if it is false. And so Buster Murdoch has to prove it's false. He has to get up and testify that he didn't do it and hope nobody has any evidence that he did in fact kill Stephen Smith. But again, I don't know of any. Uh, and then essentially he would prevail in that case. Remember too, Buster Murdoch is not a public figure. So he doesn't have to prove actual malice, which you have to prove if you're a public well-known person and someone publishes something about you. Buster Murdoch shouldn't have to prove that. So. And, and, and these companies he's going against, of course, Warner Brothers, Netflix, I mean, those are very deep pocket defendants. Those are defendants worth an awful lot of money. And there's a decent chance he could try to negotiate a settlement with this case before it goes very far, before it gets real uh, into discovery. And this is what we're seeing over the past few years. You can make some real scratch in defamation nation. Uh, I call it that because we've seen so many of these cases, you know, Johnny Depp, of course, suing Amber Heard, probably winning back his career. There have been other suits by celebrities. Cardi B won money against a blogger. There's a climate scientist named Michael Mann. He won a suit earlier this year. And then there are some big political cases you're probably familiar with. Alec Jones, Alex Jones was sued by relatives of the school children killed at Sandy Hook. They won $1.5 billion in compensatory and punitive damages. There are the, the Dominion voting cases against Fox, who settled for almost $800 million. OAN and individuals like Rudy Giuliani and Sidney Powell and also Smartmatic, another voting company has brought in uh, similar claims. There was the E. Jean Carroll case against Donald Trump. She won $83.3 million for his defamatory statements. Of course, not to be outdone, Donald Trump is currently suing ABC and George Stephanopoulos for comments they made about that case, alleging that they defamed him. So it's going both ways. Now, they're not always successful. We've seen many defamation suits brought by celebrities that didn't win. Marilyn Manson lost one. Dave Portnoy of Barstool Sports had to walk away. Sarah Palin failed in her effort against the New York Times. Stormy Daniels failed in a defamation suit against Trump. So they don't always work. Traditionally, they were very hard to sustain and very hard to prove, but we've seen so many of them and some with really, really big numbers that it motivates people like Buster Murdoch, who have been maligned in the press, possibly without basis, to bring this kind of suit to seek vindication and to seek money. His suit is proceeding in state court in South Carolina. That's an interesting decision. He could have dropped some of the defendants and gone to federal court. He could have maybe sued in a different state. Uh, there's an argument that why would he want to be in South Carolina where his family's name is not exactly held in esteem anymore? Although I think maybe he thinks the jury would be sympathetic to him. He is, after all, one of the victims of Alec Murdoch. So maybe he thinks he'll get some sympathy, especially if he can show these statements were false. Um, we're going to keep an eye on the case. We're going to definitely keep an eye on this case and others. You know, uh, by the way, I am a civil litigator and trial lawyer. And among other things, I, I brought defamation cases. I've defended against defamation cases. Uh, if you have one or are having one asserted against you, you can always give me a call 
at my law firm, Charter, Krinsky, and Trogan, or frankly, if you have other legal needs. We'll keep an eye on this case and others. For now, we are adjourned. If you like this video, please like it and subscribe. I'm Dave Ehrenberg, aka the Florida Lawman, here on the fastest growing true crime channel, True Crime MTN. And we'll see you next time.